now let's discuss about some inflammatory conditions okay which are called as the inflammatory bowel diseases which will lead to malabsorption so what are these inflammatory bowel diseases see the inflammatory bowel diseases which we are going to discuss here let me write inflammatory bowel diseases okay so in short we can call them as ibd okay ibds inflammatory bowel diseases so what are these inflammatory bowel diseases the two main inf inflammatory bowel diseases are crohn's disease and colitis ulcerative colitis it's not just colitis it's the ulcerative colitis now even in this inflammatory bowel diseases also there is malabsorption so why exactly these inflammatory bowel diseases are happening okay why exactly don't confuse with irritable bowel disease that's a total different thing these are inflammatory bowel diseases okay why exactly these inflammatory bowel diseases happens no one knows okay no there is no uh, proper explanation for that but anyway we'll see what are the important points which you should know for your exams mainly okay the first inflammatory bowel disease that i'm going to discuss here is crohn's disease crohn's disease see this crohn's disease first point it's going to affect which part of the gid see any part of gid can be affected any part of GIT can be affected. Okay, from starting from the mouth till to the like you know rectum, any part can be affected. But what is the most common site? Most common site is being ileum. Okay, the most common site is the ileum, sir. But usually, this is a question asked in the exam. Usually, rectum is spared. Okay, rectum. is spared from inflammation okay it's an inflammatory bowel disease so inflammation so one more thing which i want you to know here which i want you to know here is say any part of the GAT can be affected is it a continuous involvement for example mouth mouth with esophagus esophagus to stomach stomach to duodenum duodenum ileum something like that is it a continuous involvement please look at the diagram in the diagram see here this part of intestine is affected that the duodenum is affected this part this part this part and this part so there is involvement but it's not a continuous involvement. So this is called as skip lesions. So in this condition, what you can see here are skip lesions. Okay, that's the important MCG in Crohn's disease. Skip lesions are going to be seen. Okay, it's a skip lesions. One part is affected, other part is not affected. It's not a not continuous. Okay, not. Continuous involvement. It's not a continuous involvement. One more point I want you to know is see in this area there is inflammation. Inflammation is happening and ulcers are going to form. If you look at the ulcers, the ulcers are going to be longitudinal in nature and they are going to look like a snake. So there are longitudinal serpiginous ulcers are seen. So in Crohn's disease, serpiginous ulcers. Okay. Let me correct it. Serpiginous ulcers. So, longitudinal serpiginous ulcers are going to be seen in Crohn's disease. Now, yes, Crohn's disease is an example of inflammatory, uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Okay. In there is inflammation happening and there is not a continuous involvement here and there, here and there, some inflammation is going on with the ulcers. Okay. Now, this ulcer, is it a granulomatous condition? Is it a granulomatous inflammation or it's a non granulomatous inflammation? See, remember, we write the C, right? Crohn's. C with the C. Just do it like this, it becomes G. So, Crohn's is an example of granulomatous inflammation, MCQ. So, granulomatous inflammation. It's a granulomatous inflammatory disorder. Okay. One more thing. Now, this is your intestine. This part is affected. This part is spared. This part is affected. Now, I am talking about the affected area. Okay. It's a granulomatous infl inflammation. Okay. Now, in the GAT, there are four layers present. Mucosa, submucosa, serosa, as well as uh, muscularis and serosa. There are four layers present. Now, Crohn's, is it an example of transmural inflammation or is it an example of superficial inflammation? 
see Crohn's disease it's an example of right Crohn's it's an example of transmural inflammation it's an example of transmural inflammation which means all the layers mucosa submucosa serosa muscularis uh, muscularis and serosa all the layers are going to be involved in the inflammation means a transmural it's not just a superficial inflammation it's not just a mucosal inflammation all the layers are going to be involved in the inflammation okay next if you do endoscopy okay what you will see these are some important mcqs now look here see there is inflammation and there is mucosal edema inflammation will occur and mucosal edema is occurring so because of that mucosal edema now you can see here these are looking like a stone these are looking like stones which are on the pavement like on the road so they are looking like a cobblestones okay so this is the mcq look they see how they are looking like these are the cobblestones right now the crohn's disease also because of the mucosal edema it's going to look like cobblestone appearance okay on endoscopy our grass will look like cobble stone appearance okay next what else you should know for your uh, for your exam see these ulcers whatever are there they will start to heal okay they will start to heal now while they are healing okay then these ulcers while they are healing see how healing will occur healing will occur with the with the process of fibrosis now when fibrosis is happening see these are the fibrous depositions now when the collagen fibers are getting deposited now this fibrous tissue will cause the movement of the surrounding mesentery fat okay it will drag the surrounding mesentery fat now if you look here see now here there is fibrosis happening ulcer is getting healed when the fibrosis is happening see the surrounding mesentric fat it will be drawn here into the area or into the bowels the fat will be drawn into the bowels due to fibrosis okay fibrosis is happening this fibrosis will drag the mesentric fat so this is called as creeping fat appearance okay next so what are the important point which i am saying here ulcers they will heal by fibrosis okay ulcers are going to be healed by fibrosis now whenever fibrosis is happening two things will occur whenever it's fibrosing ulcer is fibrosing one thing it can cause is obstruction okay one thing it can cause is obstruction the fibrosis can cause obstruction and suck and second thing that can occur is because of this fibrosis there will be creeping fat appearance okay creeping fat appearance so these are some important points which i want you to know okay so crohn's disease any part of the jd can be affected from mouth till any part of the jd can be affected but rectum is usually spared the most commonly affected segment is going to be the ileum it's a, not a continuous involvement it's a skip lesion skip lesions are going to be seen with the serpiginous ulcers it's a granulomatous inflammation it's a transmural inflammation example of transmural inflammation means throughout the layers all the layers of the jd will be involved and if you do endoscopy and gross morphology what you can see is a cobblestone appearance creeping fat appearance can be seen and fibrosis can lead to obstruction obstruction or stricture formation okay obstruction or stricture okay stricture formation so you can very clearly see here there is a stricture means narrowing obstruction means block okay blocks are going to happen so these are the things which i want you to know apart from this i want to add two more important points uh, in this crohn's disease they are one thing is antibody these individuals are going to have which antibody so these individuals in their blood they are going to have anti saccharo saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody say so anti saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody anti saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody are simply called as a aska antibody so anti saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody it is positive in crohn's disease okay one thing anti saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody it's a fungal antibody saccharomyces 
anti-saccharomyces are based antibodies are usually present in this Crohn's disease. Next thing, what is something very much specific or a hallmark here? Not just a specific, it's a hallmark. I shouldn't say specific. The hallmark. The hallmark in this Crohn's condition is, and I see it's a transmural inflammation. Okay, it's a transmural inflammation. All the layers will be involved. So when all the layers is involved, there is a possibility that fistulas will develop. Okay, fistulization or fistulas are going to be developed. So fistulas are the hallmark. Fistulas are the hallmark in Crohn's disease. Okay, Crohn's disease. Let me show you. Look here, guys. See, all the layers are going to be involved in the inflammation. When all the layers are involved, there can be formation of this abnormal connection between the two segments of the intestine. Okay, that intestines will be very close to each other. Whenever the whole, all the three, all the four layers are involved, see, there is damage to all the four layers and there can be possibility of the fistulization between the two near segments. Okay, here also you can see there is a fistula between the ileum and ileum. Okay, that's the ileo-ileal fistula. Okay, ileum between the two segments, there can be a possibility of the um, fistulas. And what else are the important things? Here you can very clearly see on radiology. Okay, because of the stricture formation, okay, because of the narrowing or the obstruction, stricture formation, you can see when see this barium it is not coming down. Okay, barium is not able to come down, it's going very going through a very like you know a small lumen because there is a narrowing. Okay, there is very, there is a narrowing obstruction or stretcher formation there is a very small lumen now so barium is going through a very small narrow orifice so there is this sign which is called as string of cantor so the string of cantor is a radiological sign okay which is seen in the Crohn's disease next let's discuss about the other inflammatory bowel disorder which is called as a ulcerative colitis now, what you need to know regarding the ulcerative colitis? See, let's have the differences. Crohn's is a condition where there are skip lesions present. Skip lesions are going to be seen. Now, you look at the ulcerative colitis. In ulcerative colitis, see, there is a continuous involvement. Continuous retrograde involvement. Means inflammation is there. It's a continuous involvement. It's not a skip lesion. Second thing, what is the usually spared side in Crohn's disease? In Crohn's disease, rectum is usually spared. But here is the most common in uh, like, you know, affected area. So, first right, ulcerative colitis, there is continuous the inflammation. What, what is getting affected? Is, in, intestines are getting affected with the inflammation. Okay, continuous retrograde involvement. Means first, inflammation starts in the rectum, rectum to the like you know backward area, okay, back, 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 something like that, okay. From the rectum, rectum to the descending colon, descending to the colon to the transverse colon, transverse colon to the ascending colon, something like that, okay. There is continuous involvement, and what's the most commonly affected site? Most commonly affected site is rectum. Next. Crohn's disease is an example of granulomatous condition. It's a granulomatous uh, inflammatory disorder. This is the non-granulomatous. It's a non-granulomatous condition. Next, what else? Crohn's disease, it's a transmural inflammation. Means mucosa, submucosa, uh, muscularis, serosa, all the, all the four layers are going to be involved. Now, in this ulcerative colitis, it's not a transmural inflammation. It is... Inflammation where? It's a superficial inflammation. It's a superficial inflammation where only mucosa and submucosa. Okay, mucosa and submucosa are going to be affected. Next, what else you should know regarding this ulcerative colitis? Now, see here. In ulcerative colitis, the patients are associated with are associated with pseudopolyps. Okay, see in Crohn's disease, there is cobblestone appearance. Cobblestone pattern is going to be seen in Crohn's disease. Now here, if you look in ulcerative colitis, 
there are presence of this is pseudo polyps. Pseudo polyps are going to be seen in ulcerative colitis. That's the one point I want you to know. And this ulcerative colitis is highly associated with the colon cancer. Okay, when compared to Crohn's, it is having more risk of more risk of colon cancer. Okay, this is the one point I want to add here. Okay, next. Crohn's disease is a condition where anti-saccharomyces cervicae antibodies are going to be positive. Now, in this condition, any antibodies are present? Crohn's, sir, ulcerative colitis associated with antibodies which are ANCA. Okay, ANCA positive. It's a ANCA positive. Next, if you do radiology, okay, if you do radiology, scan, means radiology in the sense here, if you do a scan, the, ba the barium thing, okay. Now, you can very clearly see there is a continuous retrograde involvement. Okay, continuous retrograde involvement is giving you lead pipe appearance. Okay, lead pipe appearance. There, which appearance is seen in Crohn's disease? Due to stitcher formation, there is a string of cantor signs seen in the Crohn's disease. But in this condition, there is lead pipe appearance. It's looking like a lead pipe. Next, if you do biopsy. Okay. In biopsy, what you will see? See, this is the normal colon. Okay. This is how the normal colon is going to be. There are crypts. Okay, everything is good. But in ulcerative colitis, see, there is crypt abscess. Okay. See, neutrophils are going to come and accumulate in the abscess. So, forming the abscess. So, what you will see on biopsy? Crypt abscess is going to be. So, this is the important MCQ. Okay. Crept abscess is present in ulcerative colitis. So now let's see what are some important differences which you need to know for your exam. See the important differences. Uh, let, let me add one more point here. What is the treatment? The treatment of ulcerative colitis. The treatment of ulcerative colitis is sulfasalazine. And you can use steroids. Okay. So, sulfasalazine steroids can be used. There we have used uh, dapsone for the dermatitis herpetiformis and sorry, dermatitis herpetiformis, it is a totally different thing. Uh, that is a celiac disease. Okay, sorry. Now, first let us <coughs> see the differences between both Crohn's disease as well as the ulcerative colitis. In Crohn's disease, there is a transmural inflammation. In ulcerative colitis, there is no transmural inflammation, it is a superficial inflammation. In Crohn's disease, the hallmark is the fistulas. Okay, in Crohn's disease, the hallmark is the fistulization and the presence of the fistulas because of the transmural involvement. Here in ulcerative colitis, what you will see is the pseudopolyps. Pseudopolyps are going to be seen in the ulcerative colitis. They are the radiological appearance. The radiological appearance in that condition, uh, the Crohn's disease is a string of cancer sign. Here in ulcerative colitis, the radiological appearance is going to be lead pipe. There in histology, in histology, it is a granulomatous inflammation. Here it is a non granulomatous inflammation. Here in ulcerative colitis, you will also see the cryptopsis. Okay, cryptopsis is going to be seen. Next, what else are the differences? There, which antibodies are seen? Antisaccharomyces cerevisiae antibodies are seen. Here, ANCA antibodies are seen. Okay, so these are some important differences. There, it is a skip lesion. Here, it is a continuous involvement. There, rectum is paired. Here, rectum is most commonly involved. So, this is how you have to differentiate between Crohn's disease as well as ulcerative colitis. Okay, these are the most important points. So, in this video, we have completed non-infectious causes leading to wall absorption. One is the celiac disease or the celiac screw, that is the gluten sensitive enteropathy. Also, we have discussed about the Crohn's disease as well as the ulcerative colitis. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.